is Trenchcoat here, and today I'm going to be talking about the iPad. And this is going to be a girl's guide to the iPad. And by no means is this going to be like a technical kind of a video. There are plenty of places where you guys can find out about the specs of the current Apple iPad lineup and the iPad mini. So I don't want to get too bogged down in what's, you know, memory and the size differences between the two and the screen quality uh, between the full size iPad and the iPad mini because I think that that kind of stuff can change. I think they're going to stay the same size that they are, but you know, the hard drive space on them always changes and the specs inside are always changing like every year. So in order to keep this relevant, I really just want to talk about why you want an iPad, like why you need an iPad. And this was a requested video from one of my viewers who wanted to know a girl's view on the iPad. And I've had an iPad ever since the first generation of the iPad. I've had two full size iPads. I had the first one and the third one, and we're on the fourth one now. So I've got the last iteration of the full-size iPad. You can see that right here. This is my full-size iPad, and I've got it in black. And I also got the first-generation iPad mini because I really just wanted it. And so we don't need to get into that. Yes, I have two iPads. You may think it's superfluous. Um, I'm not rich or anything, and that's not why I have like two iPads. I just wanted it, and I do use them for different things. And I'm also not going to get involved in that in this video because this is literally about whether or not you are going to buy an iPad if you're thinking about it. And I'll kind of touch a little bit on the sizes, but really that's something like where you need to look at your budget and your needs and see what will work for you. So that's really not anything that I can talk on. So I would always, you know, suggest, you know, buy as much as you can afford, um, but definitely this is really not going to be in the technical differences between them because, like I said, things change and that would take up too long. So here is my iPad mini. I have a white iPad mini. It's really cute and little, so you can see that there are two different sizes. And I'm just, right now, I'm just going to talk about the size difference for you guys. And this is like the last time I really want to mention it. So as you can see, this is the one that's like, I think it's like nine and a half inches across, maybe ten inches across. I'm never sure. Nine inches, close to nine. Um, so that's this one. And then this little guy, I don't know, is it like five inches across? You can look up exactly what the sizes are. But basically, they do have a pretty significant size difference. And so there are... A few things that make one stronger than the other. I would say that really the only real difference between the sizes other than the screen resolution, like I said, this one has less of a resolution than this one. This one has a retina display, but who knows? The next one, iPad minis could have retina displays, which is why I really don't want to talk about that. So yeah, the biggest difference for me is really the size of the on-screen keyboard and, and the size of the screen in general. But I will say that for personal viewing and personal use with the apps, neither one of, like, n both of them do the same thing. Like, you're going to get pretty much the same experience in both. So if you don't have enough money for the full-size iPad and the on-screen keyboard isn't a problem for you, like you don't really plan on using it very much, then your little one is okay because I think the experience on both of them is the same. I don't get a downgraded experience. This one is much lighter like obviously, and smaller and maybe thinner. But that's like the difference. So you have to decide what size is right for you and what hard drive space you're gonna want. I always think more is better because you're always gonna wanna put more stuff on these and fill them up in like a minute. So I always try to go for a little bit more. But yeah, so that's the main difference. And on that keyboard point, a lot of people who are doing extensive writing on their iPads normally have an external keyboard of some sort, like a Bluetooth for their iPad. So that might not actually affect you. If you want to do a lot of writing, you're probably going to get an external keyboard for your iPad mini, and that's going to solve that issue anyway, and you're not going to have to worry about it. So that's the last thing I want to say about the size differences, because everything else really for me has been the same. I have the same sort of experience, except for one is smaller and even more portable. So that has its, its own implications, and that's how you have to take that and work that out in your own mind, what you kind of want to choose. So 
going back to this full-size iPad because that's what I'm going to use for the rest of this video. But I just wanted to make a note to hold tight because I'm going to do a giveaway at the end of this video. It's um, for two iPad cases that would actually fit the iPad mini. So if you're someone who has an iPad mini or wants to buy an iPad mini, you could win one of two cases at the end of this video. So, but stay tuned because you have to see what they are at the end. Okay, so here is my iPad, my third generation iPad. Love this guy. It's the older of the two that I have. And on here, I've actually gone ahead and you can see one of the uses of the iPad. I've kind of put together talking points, so I'm gonna use this to reference because you really don't need to see the iPad too much for me to have this discussion with you. And this is really what this is, a discussion and my advice and what I see as being why you as a female, as a girl, as a woman, as a mom, as a professional woman, everything. Why you need an iPad if you're thinking about it. Okay, so the first reason why you would want an iPad is because it is the best portable computing device on the market right now. So you have a variety of different options out there. There's Android tablets, there's Blackberry tablets. There's a ton of different tablets out there from a lot of different makers, but look at the numbers. The iPad is the best seller and it is really the best device that's out there. It is thin and light, as you can see. It's pretty. It's a pretty thin and light device. It has a very strong screen quality, even for any of the sizes that you get. The Retina is excellent, but even the screen quality right now on the current Mini that does not have Retina is still very, very strong. The on-screen keyboard is a very, very strong feature for the iPad. And when you compare the on-screen keyboard for the iPad to some other devices, it's autocorrect for your spelling is, is actually pretty good. It's not perfect, but I can type on screen very pretty well and it actually does autocorrect the right way most of the time, which I always really appreciate. Now, the other thing that's great about the iPad is that it has probably the best range of peripheral devices that you can buy. And I mean like keyboards and cases and speakers and just everything that you need. Um, there's like different sorts of music um, peripherals that you can add in and camera peripherals that you can add in. So really the range of what you can do with an iPad is very strong as compared to some other devices that are on the market. Like really the iPad you can do it all with and I'll talk more about that in the next few minutes. The next thing that makes the iPad the best is that it really it has two great cameras on it. It does have the front facing camera up here and it has the rear camera. So both of these cameras actually have very good qualities if you're buying one of the newer, like third generation or onward. Second generation was pretty good too, um, but really you see around the third generation that the iPad's cameras really get very, very good. And they take very excellent pictures on the go. You're not saying that you're gonna be a professional photographer with your iPad, but for taking photos like you would on your cell phone camera, this is really strong. And it sometimes with certain applications, it really can rival a portable kind of compact um, camera. And I'm not talking about like a DSLR because obviously those are a phenomenal quality that they can shoot. But you know, your compact cameras, even those with certain apps that are on, that you can get for the iPad, you can really rival those sorts of cameras as long as you're doing, you know, the right techniques and things like that. The iPad has a great set of cameras. So that's really a good thing that makes the iPad even stronger. Okay, so the second thing that makes the iPad amazing is apps, apps, and more apps. The iOS app store has to be the strongest app store available right now. Android is trying to work its way up there and it's getting some really high numbers with apps and it's a lot of people who've created iPad apps, you've got like a duplicate for Android, but really the iPad app store, the iOS app store is really excellent. And within the iOS app store, you've got applications for iPhone and specific ones that are actually geared for your iPad in the larger screen and really nothing rivals the I iOS app store. So you've got apps for everything in there. You've got apps in there for cooking, games, scheduling, writing, art, music, photography, finance, health, entertainment. You've got everything. If you need an app for something, there's an app for that in the iOS app store. So that's another thing that makes the iPad a very strong choice for any girl or guy out there. 
The next point that makes the iPad a really great device is content creation and enjoyment. With the iPad, you can enjoy content and create content all with this device. So you can make anything from music to fine arts to meals with your iPad. Now obviously you cannot cook on an iPad, but I think you understand what I mean. Using the tools that the iPad gives you, you can make a variety of different things um, depending on your particular hobbies and interests. This is really, I will say, for me as a blogger and a YouTuber, this is a blogger's best friend and a YouTuber's best friend as well mostly because of the camera and keyboard combo because you've got that keyboard so you can type and you've got the camera so you can take pictures on the go you know that's really what a lot of what blogging is about also with my youtube i obviously wrote the outline for this video on my ipad so you can see there like there's Every time I have an idea, I put it in my iPad, it's all in one place, and I can kind of work out what I want to do with my videos or with my content online. This is also a social media junkie's best friend. You can get apps for every social media outlet there is, and there's some, I think, there's some social media that I think it might just, you may only be able to get it on, on an iPhone or an iPad. So there is so many ways for you to connect with your friends, family, and the entire world just from your iPad. The next thing is books, magazines, websites, blogs, TV shows, movies, paid and free content. There's so much that you can get available on your iPad that really make it like the one-stop shop for content enjoyment. If you have a Netflix subscription, I'm not going to say that it's free movie content because you pay for that every month. Same thing with Hulu Plus, but you're that, you know, whatever that you pay for that online access, you have access to like hundreds and thousands of TV shows and movies, just a whole range of content. So it's really worth your money if you're someone who enjoys using your Netflix or your Hulu Plus subscriptions. Obviously, websites and blogs, a vast majority of those are free. Some of them do have paid subscriptions associated with them. But for the most part, you have, you have at your hands every website, most every website because I will say that the fact that it, um, Flash is still used in a lot of websites actually does, it's one down, it's like one Debbie Downer on the iPad is that it really only doesn't work with um, Adobe Flash and a lot of people get angry about that but I think that because the iPad is the most amazing device on the market for portable tablets that I think that you're going to see like in the next year or two a lot of websites are going to turnover I think from flash to like HTML5 or whatever the latest and greatest technology is at the time. So yeah you have a lot of content on here. If you're a book lover all your books are in one place. I have the Kindle app downloaded on here, the Nook app, the Kobo app, and I have iBooks and I've got books on all of them because my theory is I have one device that be able to run all of those books and open them all up for me to read. It doesn't matter it's a one-stop shop. I don't care if the apps are on you know, there's different apps and my books are in different places. I go to wherever I can get the best deal on the book I want to read. And then that's the app. I just pull it up. It's all in one place for me. So that's my view on books. Same thing with magazines. There's a couple of different places where you can get magazines, Zinio, or, you know, newsstand for iPad. And I definitely take advantage of both of those as well. So you can get a lot of different uh, content and not to mention music got on top of all this. Because remember, there's an iPod in here too. So you have music galore on here and YouTube. Like you could be watching this from an iPad right now. Imagine that. You might be on a laptop right now or maybe your phone or maybe some other tablet, but you could be using an iPad right now to watch this video because there's an app for it. The next thing that this is really great for is schoolwork, managing ideas on the go, any sorts of writing or organizational stuff that you need on the go. I'm going to go into that a little bit more in a second, but I just wanted to bring it up that you can get a lot done on this little device. And finally, games and other fun apps. There's a plethora of games. There's a plethora of different apps. You don't need to have like a little Nintendo DS or whatever to play your video games on the go. You have an iPad right here that has some really great titles. You know, a lot of the stuff does rival what comes on a portable um, gaming device. Not everything. I understand that if you want a really great gaming experience, you want to have a portable gaming device. But I think that for some people, and for oh, I think a good a good number of people, the games on the iPad will be sufficient enough for you so that you don't have to spend extra money on getting another peripheral just to play games, unless you're that into games, and that's your choice. 
So the next point that I would like to make is that the iPad is the mom's secret weapon. There are apps for kids on here. There are learning tools to help you develop your, ch your child's learning and skills and motor functions. There's on the go tips and advice that you can get if as a mom. I'm not actually a mom, but I could imagine that I would probably, like as a new mom especially, I think I would probably go like crazy, like wondering every single thing that my child was doing. And I'm definitely someone who was like a Googler. So having an iPad would, iPad would be great because on the go, I can just look things up. There's plenty of parenting websites and parent parenting apps that help with that. I actually also spoke before I wrote um, or wrote down all these points, I actually spoke to one of my girlfriends who is a mom and she was telling me some points of why she loves her iPad. And she loves it because it's a great time waste for your kids when you want them to shut up and be good. So if you're a mom and you don't have an iPad, you may want an iPad. She says that she cannot eat a meal in peace without an iPad. And I actually see this out a lot of times when I go to like family restaurants. The mom will have like an iPad or the dad will have an iPad like propped up right in front of their kid and the kid's like eating like the french fries and they've got like they're touching the screen with their ketchupy fingers but it doesn't matter because their iPad's in like a, a nice little kid proof case. Yeah so like and the parents are sitting there like loving life actually able to eat a meal without the kid like screaming at them every five minutes. So you know an iPad really is really great for moms and it's great for kids too because it's really intuitive with the touch design. Kids know how to use it. Like if you ever put this in front of a kid they know how to use it. I mean heck you watch YouTube Cats know how to use this. Dogs know how to use this. I think I saw like a lizard of some sort or maybe a frog like going after some like imaginary flies on an, on an iPad a screen. So oh, animals know how to use this. People and babies know how to use this. It's very intuitive. So it's really great for a mom. The next point I have is that this is a professional gal's personal assistant. It is a portable workstation for a lot of people who maybe have web access to their email. Some companies are actually allowing their employees to use their iPads to get access to their company's network in order to view their email on the go. So you can use you know, you can use your email on your iPad in a lot of cases. You can use your iPad for viewing and editing files and working on presentations and just getting your work done when you're not in front of your computer. There are numerous apps as well for every, nearly every, nearly every profession. So there are medical and healthcare apps for medical and healthcare professionals, business apps, sales apps, travel apps, reference apps, like it, nearly every profession has apps that go along with it or kind of informally like supplemental apps that you can use to help you do your job if you have like a one-off sort of job where there's not really apps created for your job but like a scheduling app would be useful to anybody who works or maybe has clients or has a lot of things to do or a task app would do something you know would be able to keep people you know managing their apps their time I'm sorry effectively within the app so there's plenty of ways that you can use it as a professional as well. Next, this iPad, the iPad, iPad mini as well, they are the student's best friends. You can write papers and complete homework assignments on the go. So you don't have to be in front of your computer. I mean, seriously, use that excuse with your mom next time you want to go over to your friends. Hey, I'm taking my iPad with me. I'm going to write some of my, my paper with me. Well, you know, write some of my homework down and do some of my work while I'm, at, you know, while I'm over at Susie's house. And you know, you actually could. You could actually spend a little bit of time, get a little bit of work done. Now, I don't know if you will or not if you're over at your friend's house, but think about it when you're waiting in line um, at the store or you're at a, you know, a lot of times I will do a little bit of work when I'm kind of in a waiting area, maybe to go to the doctor or someplace where you're just kind of sitting down where you can pull out your iPad pretty safely and you know, just sit down and get some work done. So there are plenty of education apps as well, software learning aids if you have kind of, you know, you need a little bit of extra homework help and things like that. This is great for doing research. A lot of times different websites and different databases with schools, between high school, college, even grade school, you have a lot of different things at your hands, at your fingertips, literally, for doing research for projects and homework and things like that. 
I also think that the iPad really helps you explore your creativity and your intellect because obviously if you have this, you may not use it just for school. You may use it, you know, kind of to play some games as a little break between your homework assignments or to listen to music and maybe to draw and doodle. And I think all that kind of stuff helps release your intellectual and your creative potential. And so I really love the iPad for that as well because it's not just all fun and it's not just all work. It really is a blend. And I really think that using an iPad as a student helps you go above and beyond because you're using this iPad and you're having fun using it and you're getting all this work done and you're doing these amazing presentations. So I think that an iPad really is a really great option for a student. So that's my opinion on the matter. So you, you know, obviously if you're younger you may need to talk to your parents about it. If you're a college or high school student who has the money to buy your own iPad, you know, that's something for you to think about. The next and my really my final point on the iPad is that it is the chameleon of the tech world. It can be anything you need it to be. So if I didn't cover a particular scenario or something, you have like a specific situation, leave me a comment and I'll try to brainstorm with you some things that you could use the iPad for to help you with whatever your particular problem is. But there's just so much. An iPad can be like so much for you. It can help you track your health and your weight loss or any goals that you have in life. It really helps you kind of express your creativity. It helps you get things done, research, everything on the go, in your pocketbook. You know, I didn't mention that either, but like, you know, obviously I think when, you know, you get asked to, you know, talk about why an iPad would be good for a girl, I kind of joke and I go, I kind of want to go beyond talking about how it fits so well in your purse, but you know, it does. And think about it, ladies, men are carrying around purses the way we are constantly. So this is really something that we can always have in our hands. It's bigger than a cell phone or an iPhone or any other smartphone. So you're really able to get more things and kind of different things done with it. So yeah, that's my view on the iPad. Like I said, there's an iPad mini and an iPad regular size. So I am now gonna talk about the iPad mini and the cases that I'm gonna do as a giveaway. Thank you so much for making it so far through this video. I think it's been like over 20 minutes at this point. So yeah, this is the iPad mini, this is mine, it's white. And I have two cases that I purchased and I kind of wanted to give them away as um, like a thank you for my, vi my viewers. I know that my channel is changing a little bit. I'm not just talking about tech all the time now. I'm branching out into kind of doing more of my strange and charmed website kind of overall lifestyle topics because I think that for a woman tech is goes along with your life in almost every aspect of it. We've got technology everywhere now. So I really like talking about digital things and analog things at the same time. So music and beauty and health and just everything, it all goes together. And so this is basically like a thank you for you guys for sticking with me even though my channel is changing a lot and I'm gonna be talking about more lifestyle things than tech things. So this, what I've got for you are two folio cases from Mobile Living, and I did pay for these myself. I bought them. No one gave them to me. I bought them at Target, um, and I've got a silver case, and I've got this striped teal and white case. So if you want this case or one of these cases, leave me a comment below and also tweet at me. Um, actually, you know what maybe I'll do is I will do different entries. If you leave me a comment on Instagram, or you comment me or take a picture on Instagram and you reply, you know, add me in your comment at Miss Trenchcoat, I'll count that. If you tweet at me, I'll count that. If you like this video, I'll count that. So those three ways you guys can get me. So on Instagram, Twitter, or comments below. And let me know which one you'd want. If you want the silver one, the silver one's really pretty. I don't know if you can see it because kind of the light's reflecting funny, but it's like just kind of like this silvery, like faux leather look. And then this one is more of like a vinyl with the teal and the white. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching this video. If you like it, please make sure to subscribe and like and share it with your friends. And as always, you can follow me on my website, www.strangecharmed.com and follow me all over the internet at Miss Trenchcoat. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have a great day, bye.